What's up, everyone? What is going on? Happy Friday to Happy everybody. Happy Friday. Right? Love seeing those emotes in the chat. I hope you're all having a good Friday so far. Or if you're, I guess, um, somewhere else in the world in a different time zone where it's already Saturday, hope you're already enjoying your weekend. Yeah, that's true. That's right. They're like, some people, it's Saturday, and they're getting that DGN in. Yeah. <laughs> DGN on the Saturday. We've got a ton of stories lined up for you today. What do we have, like 12 stories yeah, today? Yeah, we do. But I think one that stands out the most, specifically with today, is that it's official. Ghost of Tsushima is live. If you got a PS4, go and snag this game. I downloaded it last night. I can't wait to jump nice. in it and start playing. And so we got some Ghost of Tsushima talk. So our first topic is Sucker Punch actually considered pirates and the Three Musketeers and Rob Roy before going with the samurai. I thought this was really cool, by the way, just to hear this. I was like, oh, wow, they went through like a, a, a good bit of intellectual property to possibly tap into. Definitely. So Sucker Punch is uh, launching its second PlayStation 4 game today, Ghost of Tsushima. Um, and to celebrate the occasion, Sucker Punch co-founder Brian Fleming penned a blog post where he looked back at the development of the game. Apparently, before the Seattle-based team settled on Tsushima Island at the time of the first Mongol invasion of Japan in 1274, they considered settings such as Pirates, Rob Roy, and even the Three Musketeers. So Fleming said this, he said, early on, we concluded that we wanted to build a large open world experience and one that would feature melee combat. But beyond that, we were uncertain. Was it Pirates? Was it Rob Roy? Was it the Three Musketeers? I mean, all of these were considered, but we just kept coming back to feudal Japan and telling the story of a samurai warrior. Then one fateful fall afternoon, we found a historical account of the Mongol invasion of Tsushima in 1274 and the entire vision clicked into place. Fleming then revealed some of the early difficulties encountered by Sucker Punch when making Ghost of Tsushima. And this is what he said. He said, we had a lot of creative problems. We wanted to tell the tale of on not only, uh, tell the tale of only one samurai who survived the initial assault, you know, but what was the story? Who would our adversary be? Could we structure a game and story that featured a relatable human experience, but also surround it with an anthology of other stories to explore? How would we present the story? And the world we were building had no modern technology, so no cell phones to help us communicate with the player, no glitzy superpowers to create a visual spectacle. And he goes on to say, oh, and the entire game would collapse if we couldn't figure out how to make melee combat work. We had some serious problems to get to work on. In the end, what pulled them through the six-year project? He thinks the key was the clarity of the original vision. Unlike any project he's previously worked on, Ghost of Tsushima's top-line vision stayed almost entirely unchanged throughout years of development. And I think that's honestly six. one... Of the most important, you know, parts of game development is having, you know, a clear, you know, top line vision that goes, you know, throughout the entirety of development there. Yes, I commend anyone who sets out to tell a story and they say, this is our vision and we're sticking to it. We're not going to budge. And and to, to maintain it for six years. I mean, that's just such a it's long, a long time. time. <laughs> right. And this is a, this is a team that that when you think of Sucker Punch's, you know, titles like with, with infamous um, uh, and, and you could talk about Second Son as well as maybe like their second title before this one. This is their, their, their official second title of what they're doing. Infamous was great. So they had a lot to already work with as, as like a huge you know, open world title. But to just mm -hmm. not waver on what, what it was they were going to do and the reviews of this game are really backing up clearly a good decision made by them. There is already a ton of gameplay. There are walkthroughs out already about this game, and it's been out for a day, really. Um, and you'll see a lot of streamers playing this game right now. So I, I encourage anyone to get into it if you've already bought a copy. A lot of people have physical copies um, that, that have arrived already. And I think it's cool that from the get-go, this wasn't a samurai game. They were just kind of like, we want an open world game. Where do we go from here? Yeah. Um, I, I think it really shows you know, the possibilities of when, when gamers do want a pirate game or, or maybe a Three Musketeers yeah. game that you know, developers do have um, you know, a lot of resources at their disposal to create whatever world you know, they, they find the most interesting. So true, too, because like I think for me, something that really stands out is like I had always thought about where, where is like an authentic samurai game? Mm -hmm. You know? For Honor, when it came out and, and having the battle system that it had, I was like, oh, this is cool. And then they added like a samurai at some point and just the game post really failed, oh, no. uh, unfortunately. But 
there there was always something how I was like, I want to play as a samurai. Why have we never gotten a game that really backs this up? Mm-hmm. Now we have it. And I'm just so happy that they, they settled on this as the setting, uh, the time period, and the gameplay, too. Like, that's the one thing I keep reading is, like, the actual non-stealth combat is very strong. And it's one of those where they're like, we actually encourage you to go be, like, more upfront and personal really? in this game because <laughs> just the combat is just, it's just so different versus what they have in the stealth. Like, the stealth is there, but they're just saying, like, the way they did this game that has like the mixture of the the fighting combat from like a Dark Souls, Sekiro, yeah. and then also a uh, 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 Batman, they were just like they just did such a good job combining it together. You can also change your stances in fight based on the enemy oh, that nice. you're fighting. Mm-hmm. So you need to change your stance in order to take on the better type of uh, uh, fighting style. All of that, I was just reading it, and I was like, oh, my God, this sounds so cool. I love how Philip says, please drop that pirate game. Ghost of Tsushima just came out, and there's already there's already cries for the pirate game to come out. We were talking about Skull and Bones, but um, you're right. There yeah. hasn't really been, like, a solid samurai game. We haven't quite seen a solid pirate game. I, rem- I remember playing Pirates of the Caribbean online. If anyone else yeah. played that game, I, like, wanted it. I think... I wanted it to be really good, but I think my PC couldn't handle it. Um, it could only right. run like Neopets and, and <laughs> Gaia Online and, and RuneScape. Um, but I, I think fans uh, are really happy with this game so far. I've only heard great things. As you said, great reviews. Um, so far, no one's bashing on this game yet. It's not like The Last no. of Us 2 where there was a lot of hype, but also a lot of criticism. Um, I haven't yet yeah. seen any criticism about um, no. Ghost of Tsushima. I think the only thing I've seen is just that there isn't a new game plus. And, you know, I understand like, hey, if you got this big, massive game, if somebody's beating the game already so quickly, it's like, OK, I understand you're in quarantine, don't have a lot to do. You just burn through the, the, <laughs> I the story. You don't have a lot to do. <laughs> right. But, but you do also. Do, I mean, I believe a new game plus is eventually going to come out. I mean, most of these titles do that. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, yeah. it's just one of those. Take your time. You know what I mean? Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy the side missions, explore, do the photo mode. Like, if you get into this game, maybe not rush through the story too fast. So where you're like, I got to start over? I got to start all of this over again? I'm thinking we're already going to see, like, Ghost of Tsushima speedruns. Like, t- yeah. tomorrow there's going to be like, oh, yeah, I finished this game in, in two hours. You know, First. I, I just speed ran this game. Um, yeah. I love how there's already, you know, also demand for New Game Plus. I personally have never played a New Game Plus um, version oh, of wow. the game. Um, I think it's just because replay, it's so hard for me to replay mm. a game in general. Um, that even with New pl- new Game Plus, I'm like, I don't want it. I just wanted my first experience playing this game. I'm cool. Um, that the makes sense. does make it look really fun. Um, it does. Th- this Some of the photos great. from photo mode on Twitter are just like breathtaking. Just to see this photo mode that they did and they added all the different effects and layers to it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's such like a, I'm like, man, th- this is like this, just this. The swan song for for mm-hmm. for the PlayStation Four and just this like this love letter to take us out and this this wonderful final chapter of a of a beautiful title. It's like I can't wait to see this on the next gen console. I'm sure you're gonna we're gonna get a Ghost of Tsushima on PS Five. Like I I, 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 I believe so. it. <laughs> I, I hope so, and I think the environment is also a nice um, escape, I guess. It's kind of like how a lot of people might play Animal Crossing or Breath of the Wild, where just, like, being in that, like, expansive, you know, beautiful environment is, like, honestly, like, a big, big part of the game. It really is. I can't wait to play this. Also, chat, if you guys are going to play it, give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. Kaiza, if you end up getting into it, we've got to talk about it as yeah. well. Yeah. But this is cool, and and I'm 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 with that as well. It's like... Maybe they should do a pirate game next. Maybe they could do they a Three should. Musketeers game where you get you and two friends to play as the Musketeers. Yeah. I'm saying it could be pretty cool. Yeah, pirates. So moving on to our next topic. Gears 5 Xbox Series X features have been detailed with 120 FPS multiplayer being investigated. So there was the unreal uh, uh, live stream that took place. A lot of that live stream was very technical towards devs, but we were able to get some information out of there that was broken down in layman's terms for all of us layman's. So Gears 5 was one of the most impressive looking Microsoft games published in this generation. And it was confirmed early on that the game will be getting a full Xbox Series X visual upgrade. And during that recent inside Unreal live stream, 
Gears 5 developer The Coalition revealed some of the new visual features coming to the Xbox Series X's version of the game. Many of these are borrowed from the PC Ultra spec set, including higher resolution textures, improved anisotropic filtering, higher resolution volume fog, higher quality depth of field, extremely far draw distances with high level of object detail, shadow resolution and shadow distance, high quality screen space reflections, and post-processing improvements like bloom, lens flare, light shafts, etc. <sighs> Wow. And and that That's said, stuff. the coalition, yeah, right? And the coalition said they're working on some new Xbox Series X features, including screen space global illumination, which is what we know to be ray tracing and how that'll behave inside the game, higher particle accounts, and the ability to, on a console, play a multiplayer game at 120 frames. So to dive into some of these features, um, we're starting with contact shadows, which allows extreme, extremely realistic shadowing as each pixel on screen traces back to the light source to eliminate any shadow biasing artifacts or fill in missing shadows. Hey, Ralph, thank you for the follow. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to DGN. Uh, that is awesome to hear with regarding to the contact shadows. And then they go on to talk about what we were just addressing, which was the screen space global illumination which is integrated from the Unreal Engine 4, 4.24, which allows the uh, uh, achievement of full real-time global illumination in 4K at 60 frames. That's huge. And the SSGI's AO pass replaces the more traditional SSAO, giving a much more naturalistic, broad, real-time AO for those who work in game development. And then their higher particle counts was saying that their higher particle counts and just take this as a note. They're talking about the Xbox Series X. They're saying our particle counts are 50% higher than the PC's ultra specs. Which is big. And real-time cinematics and 4K 60 FPS, as we mentioned. And um, they're investigating. We're investigating 120 frames per second multiplayer support as well. So a lot of big wow. improvements. And, and one of the things that I thought was really cool was like during the live stream, the Coalition also mentioned Gears Tactics, which is getting rave and has gotten rave reviews for being a wonderful tactical shooter. Uh, it said it will be coming to the console sometime this fall, and that it's hinted at, and that's been hinted at for a while, but now we officially got confirmation. So if you're a Gears fan, this is something to be on the lookout for is Gears Tactics on PC. People are loving. I'm impressed that... For the Xbox Series X, they're pretty much saying, yes, you can play this on an ultra high spec PC, but it's actually going to be better than what you see on PC for the Xbox Series X. That is just crazy, right? Like, th this is that moment of being like, how how are they saying they, they're able to do this? And I, this every time I hear this information where I'm like, how is this console pushing, you know, a, a particle content or a particle count higher than an ultra setting on a PC, and it makes me think of what uh, uh, Tim Sweeney said with regard to consoles versus gaming PCs, and is that mm -hmm. these consoles are specifically designed to handle gaming, whereas a gaming PC, you handle both gaming as well as the normal everyday to day stuff that a, that a PC uh, is programmed and designed to handle. Right, and I think a lot of um, you know PC PC gamers think that they can get around that by saying, "Well, my specs are so good that you know no matter what, my PC is still better." But yeah. we've gotten to the point now with technology where that's not really true anymore. And yeah, maybe this game is going to run well on your three thousand dollar PC, but it's also going to run even better on a five hundred dollar console. So is it really better to be playing on PC now? And I think it really goes to show that these machines are made specifically for gaming only, um, and there is a benefit to that. It's not just like, oh. I'm not going to waste, you know, extra money on, you know, extra parts or specs that I don't need um, to play games. Um, it, they're also showing that they're the optimal machines to play games on in general. Yeah, they're 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 making they made sure. And that's the one thing I'll say for this this Unreal event, which I was like, well, we know Unreal and PlayStation with the, the, the situation with Epic. And we know that that conversation as we've had it. But just to see them talking about the Xbox Series X in this same regard, I think this gives, you know, more hope to those Xbox fans who are like, I don't want to jump over to PlayStation. You know, I'm so used to Xbox. It's what it is, and I'm comfortable here. Uh, and that's a thing where it's like you also want to, you know, make sure that the conversation surrounding that potential buy is one where they feel like the investment is is worth it, mm -hmm. and they don't, you know, they don't feel like begrudgingly spending money on it. You know, right. so this conversation I think was really, really good for the shift in perspective for the Xbox Series X. 
Me too. I think it's a good way to communicate to consumers, as you said, that, you know, this is really worth it. It's not just another, like, money grab, new console. It's like, no, like, this is a new console. It's going to it's going to really impress with what it can do and how it can play the games that you already know and love. Well, thanks yeah. so much, hey, Kai. Thank you, Kai, for the donation. Hey, Adam, also welcome. Glad to see you here. Yeah, I'm I'm, you know, I'm shifting my my criticism on the Xbox Series X. This kind of information, I was a huge Gears fan. I I'm just noticing what they're what it really just appears that they're doing is they're they're not giving the talking points that I think are important to us gamers mm -hmm. is like when you say I'm going to get to play on a console potentially at 120 FPS uh with a game like Gears, that's going to feel like a night and day difference. Mm -hmm. Right, it's you know, like I need to hear, you know, why I should play on a console versus a PC right. versus just, you know, this general talk of, you know, which is better, you know, which is yeah. more more fun, especially if there's no cross-platform play. It's like, well, I don't want to hear all the reasons why it sucks <laughs> to to play on all different kinds of machines. I want to hear why I should, you know, go out of my way or or maybe continue to to support Xbox consoles. Yeah, that's so funny. I, you're giving me all the reasons I shouldn't right. use this thing, and that's that's true. That is very, very true. What's up, Br Brillo Pad? What's Welcome. Up? The um, the funny part about this that that it was making me actually think about was just a recent uh, thing that happened. A friend of mine upgraded from his Xbox One X to a gaming PC, and he's playing mm -hmm. at 240. And he even said he was like, "This is like a night and day difference." He really? was like, "This the game." He was like, "The game looks amazing. Everything's like really crisp." I'm like, "Am I more accurate now?" Like when I play, and I said, mm. "Yeah, it's 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 pretty amazing, right?" It's the same thing for those. It, for this, for the Xbox Series X, those people who don't have to pay, you know, a thousand to two thousand dollars to jump into a gaming PC, you're talking doubling your quality of your experience within the console this year at what five hundred dollars is most right. likely going to be the, the the highest price point for an Xbox Series X. Mm -hmm. So you get to save a lot of money, and you're getting an exponential jump in the quality of game that you're playing. And I think uh, with, especially this year, I think some of these companies have to work, you know, twice as hard to communicate why consumers should buy the next gen of consoles because you can't go into a store and, and give it a test drive and hold the controller and say like, oh, this really feels good. This really looks good. Like, I'm going to buy this game. It's like, it's all online. You're not going to be able to, you know, try any demos um, since, you know, most stores are, are closed or we're back into lockdown now. Um, and they have to they have to communicate that. Coom says, I hope there's keyboard and mouse support on both consoles. I want to play Valorant on my xbox we haven't heard anything about mouse and keyboard yet but we've talked you know at uh we've talked a little bit about how at this point consoles should be able to handle a mouse and keyboard input um so i'm yeah. not sure why we haven't really heard more on that topic yet maybe it's something yeah. that you know console companies just don't want to get into right now yeah there's no first party crew like thing for mouse and keyboard on console there are pass-throughs that you can use on both the playstation 4 and xbox series x to allow you to mouse and keyboard on those bad axe by the way great name uh bad axe uh brings up a really interesting point there is are there that many people playing on console at 120 plus hertz on monitors mm -hmm. and this is a conversation that uh phil spencer alluded to a few months ago when he was mm -hmm. addressing these new consoles is is you know, technology is going to have to upgrade around these consoles. And the one area w that lacks is like where most console players play on is TVs. TVs haven't yet upgraded to that 120 hertz or higher. So, yeah, there's a, there's a strong uh, uh, question there where it's like, well, some of these people were going to have to jump the monitors if they want the full experience of 120 frames. Mm -hmm. But maybe we'll start to see these TV manufacturers change up their their technology and allow this to be possible otherwise yeah just go get a monitor and and, and get the full quality out of your out of your your console right it's it's a good problem to have it's like consoles yeah. are just too yes, good yes, for the TVs yeah. that are out i remember i think um when we were back in the studio we were you know talking about this and how TVs you know aren't nearly as advanced and if you want a TV that's going to you know compete with your monitor it's like $8000 right now or at least $4000 to have like you know the the 4k the ones you know that are the doing it yep. that you want and it's just like way too much at this point so i wonder how that is going to affect how consumers play or maybe they're just going to be like you know whatever it's fine i'll just play on my tv when i can upgrade my tv yeah. i will um a lot of consumers yeah. are waiting for these tvs to go on sale first and they they want a tv that can do all these things but i think just manufacturing or you know the, the television industry hasn't quite caught up yet yeah so and and i'm i would echo you know what what coombs is saying right there hey thank you Kyrie. i know you're excited too 
Um, so Coombs said something that I'm, I would just kind of just echo here. It's like, look, you're going to make the jump to next gen. Don't make an investment and then sit down with your current TV and just be like, why does right. this feel, you know, you're different? Like, this isn't anything new. It's like, cause your TV you is to, the same. Correct. Yeah. You, you're going to need to snag that monitor that allows you to get the full quality out, out of your console and, you know, just go ahead and do it. It it is another expense that is there, but you're nowhere near what you would put on a gaming PC. And I think that's the thing to always take right. into account here is even outside of like a fifteen hundred dollar to two thousand dollar gaming PC, you still got to go buy the monitor, you still yep. got to go buy the mouse and keyboard, you still got to buy the desk. I mean, you got to add all these other things. If they do start adding up, that this console, you're going to get nowhere close to. That's so true. When, build, when building a PC, you're like, okay, the PC's done. And you're like, oh, I need a mouse pad. Oh, right. To stream, I need a microphone. Oh, wait, I need a camera. And um, Versus, yeah. you know, what these consoles can do. Uh, gaming is so much more than, uh, so much more supported on a monitor than a TV, says Meg. I think there's yeah. also, I would love to see kind of a breakdown of what kinds of gamers there are or people that still, you know, play in, in their living rooms, like on their yeah. couches, on their TV versus at a desk, which is, I think, more new age, I guess. Uh, a, a yeah. lot of gamers are now preferring to, you know, play at a desk with a PC because a lot of streamers and a lot of creators are doing that. Yeah. And so, I mean, I am excited to see Gears 5 in action on the Xbox Series X. It's great you talk about it. They showed a little bit of like what it looks like in it, but more in like a developer place. So even though it was gameplay, this is the this is the area of conversation with Microsoft that we've been having this issue with whenever it surrounds Microsoft, is they'll use the term gameplay or people will use gameplay and you're just not seeing full actual gameplay. Like where is so, the gameplay? <laughs> Yeah, you, I, it's that it's that whole thing from like Princess Bride where it's like you use that word, but I don't think you actually know what that word means. Right. But you keep using that word. Yeah, this is just that that again one of those moments in a live stream around Xbox that you're like, you guys said gameplay again, but I didn't really get. <laughs> I didn't really Where get it. Where is it? I'm trying to yeah. see it. Um, but we do have some gameplay to show you, some real gameplay. What's up, JTS? Welcome to the stream. What up, hey, JTS? Dark Sanity. Um, hey, Adam Dark. said they were excited uh, for this topic as we have a, a new game called Under, which is a PT-like horror game set on a sinking ship with the gameplay and trailer revealed. Yeah, so when we saw this, one of the first things I thought about was Kaiza because you stream and you like to play these horror games. Mm. So I was like, I don't want to watch the trailer. I want to watch it with you. But I really think I was like, I think Under is like right up her alley. Sounds spooky. Should we talk about it first or watch the trailer first? What do you think? Yeah, so let's go ahead and dive in. So, so if you've ever wondered what it's like to try and escape a sinking ship, but also what if I'm trying to escape a sinking ship that's haunted? Well, Under is that kind of horror game. So Under is exactly that kind of horror game where players take on the role of a traumatized World War I veteran called Alexander Doctor. His last name is Doctor. He's not a doctor, <laughs> as far as I know. As Alexander Doctor tries to escape a sinking ocean liner full of horrors and narrow corridors reminiscent of P.T. So Under bills, uh, Under bills itself as a cl classic horror game with a gorgeous setting and plenty of scares. The two main dangers are the creatures that are stalking Alexander and the possibly more pressing matter of you're on a stinking ship. <laughs> So as part of Publisher Rogue's foray into console gaming, including the announcement that former Nintendo of America president Reggie fils is joining the company's board, Rogue announced that the developer Globus' upcoming horror game is also coming to consoles later this year. And there isn't an exact release date, but it has been confirmed that it will be PC, Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation in quarter four of 2020. So let's take a look at that trailer. Check it out. I can't tell if my YouTube page is muted. Yep, all right, let's get that audio back in here. I'm already creeped out. Ah! Ah! This is 
so stressful. Oh, no. oh my god. Jack, don't leave me! <laughs> oh hey! I hope it actually works. Oh my god! Oh no! Boarding later this year. Oh my god. Wow! That looks cool! Uh, it reminds me of it feels very layers of fear too, because layers of oh fear. Oh my god, too. fear, yeah. Yes, it um it happened on a ship and you're like running away from from something unknown as well that's yeah. following you the whole time. Um I feel like this is very like new or, or modern, like traditional horror. Can I use the two words yeah. together where it's like I think you can. You're on a ship which sucks because there are so many yeah. corners and so many hallways. It's sinking, which means I don't know if that means you're gonna have to like run everywhere and you have someone to escape from. That's oh that's so much there. It's so stressful. And and you just described things that are like these are individual horror experiences all under mm -hmm. one title. Yeah. Um and that PT feel is so strong here that's the one thing that I'll, a lot i'll say is like pt creeped me out because it just had this visual aesthetic that i get when i'm looking at this mm -hmm. and then it also has kind of like that element of um uh, uh, outlast with the running yes, the constantly trying to get away but then i saw the pistol so i was like oh maybe you can actually like bend yourself against these things or is it just going to be kind of like one of those moments where you're like i got a pistol when you shoot it and it keeps coming at you like this right. is pointless <laughs> like why do i have this to begin with uh, it yeah. does feel very outlasty um you know with with the notes hidden around with with the running with having to hide uh it, lo it looks really cool i like i hope there's a lot of these parts where you just kind of explore because yeah. i like horror games where there's a lot of like exploration there's a lot of cool story and it's not just you know being stressed and running the whole time like outlast 2 was oh my god and uh, yeah the, you need those like breaks and hopefully they did that hopefully they the, the individuals behind this have that kind of like horror knowledge that there's just a certain place in where you have to put the breaks to basically like like a uh, 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 dark insanity saying it's just more hectic than anything and yeah. anxiety inducing. EG was mm -hmm. saying it's like sometimes that can just become too much and you're like I just can't play this. I just can't play this anymore. For me, there's definitely a line between fun, stressful, and just like horrible, yes. stressful. And for me, Outlast Two was just horrible, stressful. That's so true. Hey, thank you for the follow, Bloody Nose Welcome. Greek. Welcome. So this is just one of those titles where I, I can't wait to see, and I'm I'm curious about this, like. When yeah. you explore an area and the water is rising, is it one of those things where, like, you have to take into account that water is going to keep rising? So you eventually, if you don't explore enough or do all of the exploration possible, it's just gone. It's too no, late. The water is just taking it away from you. From what we can see here, it looks like the water level is kind of staying the same. So I don't know if it's maybe you, when yeah. you progress through the game, it gets higher and higher. And I wonder, it, it doesn't look like it affects your movement at all. You can still go around as there. You know, yeah. creepy crawlies in the hallways and in the rooms. Right? Oh, man. And then it's kind of got that feel of like, oh, you're going to turn a corner and there it is. Like that door just shut, which is just. I, this reminds you know. me of um, TwitchCon. I think it was 2017, my first TwitchCon. They had a party hey. at. Have you been to the St. Mary's cruise ship? St. Mary's cruise ship? In, like, I know Long of it. Beach? Yeah, the haunted yes. one. They had the, the TwitchCon party was there and it was like a haunted cruise ship and there was like a haunted house and we were just like also just like exploring around the ship and it looked like this and it was terrifying and I'm like this is like all the horror games I played realized. Yeah, no. No party. It's really no, what scary. We, do? We, do, we, do, we don't party at it a haunted ship. It was like a freak show like circus themes. They were like, oh, we're going to make it really spooky. It was spooky. It was mad This is spooky. the conversation that we had when we were talking about the next Resident Evil was just the whole like if you can choose to be in an environment that's haunted, you don't go. <laughs> You know what I mean? You just don't. Now, you if you wake around. up and you're there and you got to deal with it, okay. But if you're like, yeah, you know what? Let's just go to this haunted location. No, right. no, don't go. I, I'm a fan of how much this is all gameplay from this game that hasn't even been released, which which I yeah. like because it's not like this isn't really showing anything. This isn't spoiling anything, but this is giving me a sense of like, do, will I like this game or will I not like this game? And I yeah. personally think I will. And <laughs> and I hope we see kind of more gameplay trailers like this where it's like, yes. you can show how the game is played without, you know, showing all your cards. Yeah. And that that. That is one of those those strengths of indie titles is I really feel like, and especially like we don't really know much about who this developer uh, is in terms of like how do they compete against, you know, some of these bigger AAA titles. Mm -hmm. 
they put the gameplay first. They put, what are right. you going to experience? Here's a trailer where you see gameplay. And then here's actual gameplay. So this mm-hmm. is what it's going to be like for you. I'm I'm also real cu- curious, is ray tracing? Are they going to have RTX capabilities with this? Because if this is one of those uh. games where you throw it on a PC or your next-gen console and you throw on ray tracing, I don't. I'm, I, I will not even be able to watch streams. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> You're like, this is, this is too much. The ray tracing makes it too real. Yeah. I, I hope so, too. And I hope, um, as we've talked about, that uh, next-gen console, you know, the audio technology also brings in another scary element to this. Mm. Oh, my God. Now, like, ugh, I just, <laughs> nope. I, I knew watching this, like that, nope, like run, that. <laughs> run away. Stop staring. Move. Move, Move your legs. Move the monster. That'll always work out. Oh my god! So I love I'm, I love Adam's comment. Horror relaxes me. Adam, can't relate. I can't relate, but thank you for existing and l- allowing me to digest information like horror relaxing someone. Right, wild stuff. So our next topic doesn't have to do with horror at all, but rather um, a a studio um, that develops a shooter game. Yeah. So Crossfire Studio. Smilegate is now opening its new studio to focus on AAA titles, and this will actually be an open world title. So Smilegate is opening up a new studio whose sole purpose is to focus on AAA games, with their first project being an open world title for consoles. The new studio, dubbed Smilegate Barcelona, is located in Barcelona, Spain, and is currently looking to expand their workforce, which is a little over 20 members as of today. Smilegate is most known for its publishing a first-person shooter, Crossfire, and is currently working on the Xbox One release version, Crossfire X. So this is what they say about it. As open world games will continue to dominate the video game industry, we are well positioned to build upon our team's experience with talent from around the world and are ready to create a AAA experience from our new studio in Barcelona, said Yango Kim, the CEO of Smilegate Barcelona. He went on to say that Barcelona's vibrant and lively youth culture set to the backdrop of a gorgeous old world history is a powerful and inspiring combination The city welcomes creativity and supports technological industries such as our own with a strong infrastructure and a high quality of life. The press release states that Barcelona was chosen for the new studio due to how important the city has become to Europe in terms of technological advances, amongst other things. This announcement comes with a number of new job openings that are now live on their official website. No further details were given as to what this open world may be or pertain to, though we do know in the very least the studio will focus on making console games. And chances are we won't hear about this project for some time, which is really leaving us to assume that this will most likely release on the next-gen titles of PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, and we'll be sure to update what happens with Smile. So this company created Crossfire, and for for those of you who don't know, um, it's the world's most played video game by player count, with a lifetime total of 1 billion users in 80 countries worldwide, and was one of the top grossing online games as of 2014. A lot of you might not really have heard of this game because it's mainly popular in Asia, especially China and Korea, um, and is owned by Tencent, which has a big stake in, um, in, in the gaming industry. I think it's cool to hear that they're opening up um you know this new studio in barcelona i feel like you know especially being um uh, american i guess when when it comes to to studios overseas i know ubisoft is in france um i know um remedy i believe um the company behind control is 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 finnish but i don't know anything about you know games coming out of barcelona specifically so it's it's cool um that there's you know more developments there The, the technological infrastructure of spain has grown I mean, they're they're one of the countries that I think now has like as a minimum is gigabit internet. Like that's like your your wow. minimum. Your high, mm-hmm. the internet there is there is crazy. I think they have a lot of the five G towers already. I mean, it is an area where it's just like, why don't we have this internet infrastructure everywhere? Right. You know, so <laughs> it it makes sense that you would be like a game studio and go, hey, let's let's come here. We know where our our games will do best is at a place where especially a multiplayer experience like Crossfire. You, know, you want to make sure you have that 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 internet infrastructure, but then I'm also really excited to see what someone like Crossfire, who's had a lot of experience, they probably have a very large community feedback portion. If you mm-hmm. have that many people playing right. the game, mm-hmm. what are they going to do with the open world genre on the next gen that we haven't seen yet? You know, it's going to be something new and fresh and exciting. So I hope they do set out to just make something 
that hasn't been done yet versus our typical open world experience that we know of, like we're going to get out of Ghost of Tsushima. Me too. And we know that they definitely have, you know, the the money to back a big project. Taking on an open world game to develop is a huge undertaking, um, which requires massive amounts of content to be created for that game. But it seems like they really have what it takes, as you said, you know, with uh, their huge player base. I'm sure they're used to taking in community feedback um, and, and seeing what they want to do from there. It's such a pivot because uh, Crossfire, I believe, is an FPS game. And this is going yes. to an open world game, uh, yes. which is which is so different, which um, I'm excited to see. I'm all over yeah. More open world games. Same. I love it. Give me a world to just go in and explore and it doesn't get boring too fast. And, you know, let's see what they do. I'm ha- hats off to them for going, going with the gusto of trying to get these AAA titles going. But they're not the only company working on making something new. So Square Enix, belovedly known Enix. as Squeenix by us, announces a new action game brand called Balan Company. Yeah, so this is just... A bit of interesting news is Square Enix announced this new brand, and they call it Balan Company. And Square Enix calls this an action game brand and has issued a press release with not a lot of details about this announcement. Balan Company is Square Enix's new action game brand that brings together talented action game developers, visual and music creators from both inside and outside the company. The company part of Balan Company refers to the coming together of all our creative staff in the manner of a musical cast or theater troupe. It symbolizes, this is what they finished by saying, it symbolizes how the professionals from all the different disciplines involved in creating Balan Company games form a team like a company of players. With the game itself as their stage, set to tell the greatest stories and provide the ultimate in action game entertainment to audiences around the world. In addition to the press release, a new website called Balan Wonderworld has been launched too. According to Square Enix, more information on the first game under this new brand is coming soon. Action game brand. It's really interesting they use that language. Me too. I think it's interesting how they're talking about how the team is like a company of players and the game is their stage. And I wonder how that's actually going to come together because as someone who's been, you know, part of part of theater productions and, and musicals, <laughs> you know, like I understand what they're trying to get at with that kind of yeah. camaraderie. And I wonder how it's going to translate to their first game. Yeah, that's that's the part that... that we- I, I feel like if I think of some Square Enix titles, I can think of them being, they feel like action is there, but I wonder if the language of action game is like, you know, like a like a first person shooter type action game, like a like one that feels more cinematic action movie type, right. or and less fantasy. Mm-hmm. I mean, because a lot of Square Enix games are deeply rooted in some sort of fantasy uh, uh, visual or portrayal. Right, and like like deep storytelling and, and a lot of yeah. like maybe like dark elements in yeah. there. I don't know exactly what they, they mean by this. If you check out the Balan Wonderworld website, it's just kind of like a a, a picture of yeah. just like a stage and it's just like Balan Company and that's kind of yeah. all we know so far. Uh, so I hope we get, you know, new updates um, on, on this pretty soon. Yeah, and I, I, I would speculate to say is I think this makes sense for Square, ne- Square Enix's image all around not necessarily to say like hey we're going to create titles as square enix that are action because we don't want to confuse the brand Mm -hmm. but we're going to have balan company which is just going to be a subsidiary of us that will create these titles and grow its reputation for balan company which i I think is like a cool approach to what we were just saying is a lot of their storytelling just doesn't really fit in that like for example like call of duty has doesn't have in-depth storytelling it's very it's very shallow storytelling Uh but Maybe Square Enix wants to tap into that with some fun gameplay elements that they were like, hey, we have ideas that we'd like to implement in this genre and, you know, we don't want to confuse people with with what Square Enix has done in the past. So here's this new. I, I think that's a good move as to not confuse consumers, because if you have, you know, a company that's 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 made one game and, and they have a foray into another, you know, the developers might be totally different. It might be a different team yeah. still under that same name. But, you know, in the minds of consumers, it's the same thing. Um, and yep. I think it's a good it's a good way for them to communicate that, like, hey, this is a separate entity. You know, these games are going to be standalone under, you know, under this umbrella. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll say this. Square Enix has delivered time and time again. They have made so many many amazing video games that I'm excited to see what they do with this new brand, with this new company. And we have to assume it's a next-gen venture. So what are they going to do with the next-gen technology? What is Square Enix going to show us that we haven't yet seen or 
their take on the action genre. I'm all for it. And, and, and just can't wait to see what Balan Company drops. Me too. Um, but we have another video game that has dropped in regards to Netflix. And this is kind of a weird story. As Netflix's yeah. Old Guard video game contest promises an 83-year Netflix subscription. 83 years? Wow. Okay, so Netflix is holding a game tournament for the old guard fans and the winner won't have to pay for a subscription for the rest of their life. And to celebrate this launch and to promote the Charlize Theron flick, the streaming giant is hosting a gaming competition featuring an original, the old guard video game from July 17th through the 19th. So starting today until the 19th, those interested in winning an immortal subscription will have to beat everyone else and be number one by the end of this event this weekend. So the game is playing on the screen and you're going to have to be number one in the world to win this subscription, which some of you might look at this game and be like, hey, that's actually not that hard. I'm just going to, you know, crank this out this weekend and get a Netflix subscription for the rest of my life. So the subscription won't last forever. You know, they, they're promising an immortal subscription, but it'll be good for a thousand months. Or, years. Yes. If civilization hasn't collapsed yet by then, um, who knows if Netflix is going to even be around by then. So Netflix says fans can expect to play a browser-based top-down beat-em-up video game that that mirrors the events of the film, which is based on a graphic novel by Greg Rucka. Competitors will play as Andromash of Scythia, Throne's character, who's the oldest immortal of her crew. They'll also be wielding Andromash's weapon of choice, a double-bladed axe called the Labyrus. So to stay true to the story, getting killed in the game doesn't actually put the player out of commission. It will, however, slow you down and make it much harder to end up with a higher score. The Old Guard game will be available through its official website starting today at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and like we said, running through till the 19th. I'm not sure if this is a U.S.-only competition. Um, it just says you have to beat everyone else and be number one, so maybe you'll have to go to the website and check it out. I wonder how hard this challenge will be. I wonder how many people are going to be playing this. I mean, the game itself, to me, doesn't look particularly riveting, but... Maybe some of you will enjoy this genre. I hope somebody in the DGN fam comes back and is like, hey, yes. I got the subscription. You know what I mean? Like Netflix party on me for life. Right. I mean, this 83 months. I, if you just do the math, years. you're like, yeah. sorry, 83 years. Thank you. A thousand months, 83 years. It's like, yeah, this is totally worth it. I think I'm going to go for this. I would say that's worth it, that the money you'd spend on Netflix over the course of 83 years, you know, versus the time spent this weekend trying to be number one at this game. Might pay off. Who knows? I, I, I hope somebody's like streaming it right now or documenting it. I can't. I can't wait to get to the nineteenth to find out who this person is that's won this, you know, award. They're gonna be really popular. It's like somebody winning the lottery. Like everyone right. has Netflix. No one wants to have to pay the monthly fee. So he's be like, "Hey, can I get your account? You know what I mean? Can I? Can I get your account on my on my uh, my my PC, my console?" Right. Oh, no, it is US only, unfortunately. I also, since I have very little faith in gamers sometimes, <laughs> I'm wondering if the person who wins is going to be like a cheater and if they're going to care or know that they're no. a cheater because it's just a browser game. That's what I was going to say. It's like someone's figuring it out. They're like, I'll yeah, get number one. Just give me a scripts. second. I'm figuring your code yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> they're over to the side. I want this Netflix yeah. subscription. Uh, so we'll see. What's if up, anyone Pizza Tech? Wins that? What's up? And and who's gonna who's gonna win that? Just kind of a quirky, quirky, fun um story really that we got for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! But this next one is really interesting. As we talked about this earlier this week, right? Or maybe yes. it was maybe it was last week. We were talking about Something the like the Twitch and U.S. Army channel. Well, Twitch is told the U.S. Army to stop sharing fake prize giveaways that sent users to recruitment pages. Which, when I first saw, I saw a tweet about this, and I was like, that can't be true. That sounds absurd. But this was, um, you know, our information is from an article published by The Verge. So I, you know, I, I trust that this is true. So the practice was brought to light by a report from The Nation on the use of esports as a recruitment tool by the American military. The U.S. Army, Navy, and Air Force, all field esports teams comprised of active and reserve personnel who stream on Twitch and chat with viewers about life, video games, and the opportunities afforded by military service just a normal conversation just a normal conversation so the the head of the army's recruitment command told think tech hawaii this esports is just an avenue to start a conversation this was major general frank muff 
And he goes, we go out there and we have a shared passion for esports, and it naturally devolves into a conversation. What do you do? Well, I'm in the army. So this outreach included automated links dropped into the army stream chat that told viewers they could win an Xbox Elite Series 2 controller in a giveaway, which I, this raised red flags for me because I'm like, did my taxes pay for this controller that's now being given away to users on Twitch? But I guess it doesn't even matter because when anyone clicks the link, they're directed to a recruiting form with no additional mention of contest, odds, total number of winners, or when a drawing would occur. So viewers, streamers, and Game developers reacted with anger to the news, saying that any other channel would face repercussions for such behavior. Twitch itself has now apparently forced the army to stop these giveaways, and this was according to a report from Kotaku. A spokesperson um, for Kotaku said, per our terms of service, promotions on Twitch must comply with all applicable laws. This promotion did not comply with our terms, and we've required them to remove it. In addition to fake giveaway prizes, the Army's Twitch stream is also in trouble for potentially violating the First Amendment after it banned viewers who asked recruiters what their favorite U.S. Army war crime was. So I had some questions about this because I was like, freedom of speech doesn't apply to Twitch, but it turns out so. Twitch allows streamers to moderate their channels how they see fit, but any public forum hosted by the government, including those online, must follow stringent free speech rules. This was established last year when a federal court rules that President Donald Trump isn't allowed to block his critics on Twitter. So this was Katie Fallow, a senior attorney with the Knight Foundation. She was talking to Vice, and this is what she said. As a general rule, and as established in our case against Trump, if a government agency or branch of the military operates a social media platform or website, and they allow people to generally post comments, then typically that would be considered a public forum. If the Army runs a Twitch channel, it's a public forum. Then deleting comments or blocking people from commenting based on their viewpoints, such as asking about military crimes, would violate the First Amendment. Uh, yes, Kane says, freedom of speech, you're the government, it applies. So when people come into, let's say, Barone's or my stream and says freedom of speech, we can just block them. But if you are, you know, the government, if you are, you know, the U.S. Army, you can't just block whoever it is a violation. Um, I think that U.S. Army esports kind of bit off more that they could chew. I, I already previously stated how I think that they are out of touch with Twitch culture but it seems like they also just don't really understand the legality of their actions either. Yeah. Um, so t two things that the EB comment there, it's true that, that, that lawyer deserves a raise or deserves a bunch of cases that, that win ultimately and beats, you can sub to that channel. Like you can behave on oh, that channel you? every way that you can, but you can't, uh, the, 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 the comments can't work. And I did re remember seeing, uh, a tweet from somebody that we're going to come up to in, here in a little bit on a different story is uh, Slasher was pointing out the fact that there were 7,000 viewers on the Army Twitch's, Twitch's channel, but only 200 people were commenting. And he was calling them out for using stream bots to watch the channel because it was just such a drastic difference. Jeez. So I thought, it was, I thought it was really interesting. I was like, the Army's, like, whoever's running this is just super out of touch with how this works. Yeah, Sequazi says, the army not knowing the law makes me a little bit uneasy. You think that they would know this stuff. I know, like, like Bernie Sanders has a Twitch channel, but on Bernie Sanders' Twitch, you cannot subscribe. There is no subscribe button. Um, and, you know, it's not Bernie really talking to the chat. It would just be, like, pre-recorded, pre like, rallies that would be played, or he had, like, a Q&A fireside chat kind of thing going on. And I was actually like, oh, this is cool. Like, way to go, Bernie. But, you know, to just do, just, like, if Bernie did, like, a gaming stream, like, that in itself would be weird and out of touch. And you're going to really have to know your, your TOS. You're going to really have to yeah. know your, your United States law. I think that yeah. might help if you're going to be online. Yeah, my hat's off to Twitch too, by the way. And 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 this is just kind of like one of those moments of being like, good on you guys for yes. being like, hey, this is in violation. We're going to let you know it's in violation. And in fact, if you want to use our platform, here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to remove that or stop that in any way. And this is this is where I'm kind of like, hey, thank you for, you know, not bending to the governing bodies out of fear and saying like, no, you're in violation of the law that we're all universally agreeing on so that we move forward in a, in a just direction and not taking advantage of one another or, you know, 
practicing some manipul- manip- manipulative behavior. Right. Um, I I hope that we see them, the U.S. Army just stopping streaming on Twitch. Or, or if they do, yeah. I hope they do it in a way that's, you know, relevant, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, if you want to use it as a recruiting tool, I guess, sure. But don't do it in a way that makes you look really, really bad. Right. That's true. And I, I think it would just be best. We said this before. It was like, hey, if they come back and do this again, maybe they should come back and, you know, have somebody in charge and do this. I think yeah. they should just stop. Like, I mean, my <laughs> personal opinion in this moment is like, that's two strikeouts. Like, that, that, that's two yeah, really two. bad, you know, A notches on giveaway? the belt. Come on. Really? Come on. That I would just... I would just be like, all right, let's just not do it. Let's stop. We're we're right. not we're not we're not helping ourselves in any way. Right now. We're yeah. This this is this is not a good look. So, have you seen this trailer, Barone? This next topic. I saw this, and I was like, I saw your comment on it as well uh, on Twitter. This is this is really odd. This is like um, I don't know, like Inception kind of feeling when it comes to like a video game and real life. It's it's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Floral Meg um, brought this on uh, to, to my radar um, and posted it in my Discord, and I took a look. I think some of you may have seen it. Um, we're going to show this trailer, uh, which was tweeted out by Rod Breslau, i.e. Slasher. He tweeted, the official PlayStation account released a trailer for a new FMV game, which is a game where it's like, recorded with real cameras um, is, is the footage. It's not like game-created footage. Um, and so the PlayStation account released this trailer before quickly deleting it. He presents to you a title called Gamer Girl. We're already off to an odd start when it's like, hey, here's the trailer, delete it. What? Yeah, why was it deleted? Well, okay. we're going to take a look and you can probably see why for yourself. Peggy 18. Hey everybody! Okay, cool. Water time, break time. All that uh, junk has been taken out my stream. Oh, come on. No. Moderator, what do I do? Like, do I answer it? We should go for a drink <gasps> after. Yeah, maybe. Yeah? I know, what do you guys think? You got that, guys? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no! I wonder if this actor is a real streamer. You're streaming again? Yeah. What's it to you? <gasps> this is scarier than under, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Says Philip. Yeah. Too, gonna... too real. Make sure he's okay. It's like a Black Mirror video game. Yeah, if, if anyone has seen Cam with Madeline Brewer, it it feels very similar. Yeah, it feels very Black Mirror-y. Okay, let's get out of here. Oh, oh, oh my god! Oh Steam, PS4, Xbox One, Switch? What? I'm at a loss for words. Yeah, just look, just reading through some of the top comments here. Uh, I thought this was a troll video. Yikes! Um, and people are like, "What? What is this?" A lot of just like reaction gifs that are the same thing, where just no words, just like, huh? Kind of like a like yeah. a what? A what kind of face? Um, apparently, Wales Interactive says Gamer Girl is about the impact user comments and actions have on a streamer's mental health and well-being. The reason why right. FMV Future created the game was to raise the issue of the toxic environment, which can often appear online. But it seems like it's it's not talking about the streamer's mental health. It's you negatively impacting this fake streamer's mental health and you being the perpetrator of doing these terrible things to this streamer. That, that was the part that I couldn't get over was I was like, am I protecting this person? No, What's- you're like, not. It's like, like they're like, oh, it's like, they also, they also said a comment about how this was empowering and everyone's like, what are you, what are you talking about? Is did they like talk to any <laughs> anyone streamers? 
especially <laughs> you know of, of of the female sex that were like I can tell you right right away that this this is how I feel about this title or was this right. I'm curious was this like one of those and we've seen it before in like narratives where it's just like that's a bunch of men telling a story about a woman they clearly have no idea of of what it is they're doing is that this situation here like that's, that's right. such an odd game. It's it's so odd to me. And I think, you know, what, what Cam did, which um, it was from the perspective of a, a different kind of, of live streamer, but a live streamer of sorts. Um, but it right. was it was kind of like a social horror commentary because it was seeing her mm. life and how her life was negatively affected by these other things. Okay. So you're kind of rooting for her to succeed. So I think if this game flipped the perspective of like, you're the streamer. You know, this is, you know, like that game is like one of my worst nightmares as a streamer. So like you're the streamer and maybe people who don't stream really realize how scary it is to see, you know, bad messages on the Internet or the threat of stalking or or et cetera. I could see maybe, maybe that could be something interesting to see versus just this game where people can live out their fantasy of being like an abusive moderator. Yeah, that. Yeah, I was just looking at some of the, some of the comments in the chat. It's like like Beats is saying like games shouldn't show off this type of stuff. They they just they shouldn't. Um, uh, you know, I, I just take a moment here and just kind of be like, you know, usually like when films and shows get made, there's like a test audience. You privately right. show this off, and you're like, hey, what is your general feeling of what it is you just watched? And they released this clearly without that being the case because they deleted it shortly after the right. immediate backlash, which was like. We're just out of touch. I can't. I, I'm honestly surprised that they posted it and then immediately deleted it versus, you know, confirming like, hey, should we really post this first? Because as you yeah. said, it raises they, they knew it was bad um, because they deleted it after if they left it up. You know, that would have also been terrible. I'm surprised yeah. this whole game was even, you know, made and tweeted from the PlayStation account. And, like this isn't like some like weird indie game like this was an official, you know, PlayStation tweeted game wow that's so it's weird too because like for me i'm like i can't really make a commentary on this i could say that i'm I'm uncomfortable by what i'm seeing but you guys are like i mean this this is a game where you have a very specific viewpoint on who who you are just biologically speaking in the world and who you are as a professional like when you saw that trailer for the first time were you just like this who made this this needs to go out how did you feel it was just so like weird or to take like a very real terrible experience and to like make it into a game i'm like this isn't a game to me i think it also doesn't help at all that women on twitch already often have a bad rap for you know as you could see the girl in the trailer did she was like dress cute and you know kind of doing her thing and it's like it's okay to do that but a lot of people you know really look down on that and this game just adds to the stereotype of like dumb girl streamer in a skimpy outfit like let's try to yeah. harass her is like pretty much what the game was and i'm like yeah that there's just so there's so much to unpack there there is so much wrong with that it's giving you know women streamers a bad name it's creating this this game where you can really like act out you know oh what would it be like to to you know harass one of these people like for fun like it's just so it's just so many degrees of awful yeah, clearly they did not talk to anyone like yourself or who thinks like that, which would lead me to believe the majority of those who would be directly offended by this. So, yeah, hopefully hopefully this is just one of those, like, you know what? We're not going to release it. We we didn't really understand what we were doing. Like, own it. Like, at this point, right, with the response right. to this, Please own your own mistake, it. acknowledge it, don't release the game, keep it away, go it. back and change it or, or whatever. But just, yeah, really bad, poor Poor decision there. Some some streamers have been, you know, calling for Twitch to ban this game. Uh, as Buckle says, Sweet Anita is suffering from this right now. She's a really bad stalker, and I think she went to the police, and the police couldn't do anything. And, you know, I'm sure that can, you know, really mess up a lot of your life if something like that happens. It's a real issue. I don't think it's appropriate yeah. to show on Twitch. Um, I, I hope that, you know, if – I hope this game doesn't get released. I hope – PlayStation apologizes. I hope if this game gets released, it is banned on Twitch because I don't think that, you know, that would be good in any way um, to the Twitch community or just uh, the well-being of streamers. Yeah. For anyone in chat, anybody watching and you feel the same way, find a, I don't know where, maybe there's like a forum or something. Just Comment express yourself. Comment on Slasher's tweet, I would say. Yeah. 
comment on his tweet. Maybe there's a Reddit thread going somewhere. Get that voice out there that these developers, whoever these are, even the publishers behind it, PlayStation behind it, gets to hear how you feel about this because they will respond. So mm-hmm. make your voices be heard right now. This is, yeah. Um, I'm, but I'm, I'm still mind blown. I'd like to end on a note of games we want to play or games yes. we want to talk about. So quickly, right before we end, um, what are you playing this weekend? So, as I discussed, Ghost of Tsushima, I'm definitely going to be diving into. And I'm probably going to be, of course, just going after these wins in in Warzone. They've been been growing. Found a couple of teammates that were just just doing really well together. Uh, What about you? What are you going to be playing? Very nice. Um, I I think I'm going to be playing a little Paper Mario. Ooh. I'm gonna see how that game looks. Um, probably some Thanks. League of Legends. I've been losing a lot of games. I don't know what oh. it is. I keep lagging, and I'm not good enough as a player anyway. But to also have lag, I'm like, please let me win one of these games. Uh, yeah, I I think the lag thing we're all suffering. Looks like some others are gonna be doing some Paper Mario as well as some Modern nice. Warfare. Nice. I love it. Anybody else diving into the Ghost of Tsushima experience? As well anyone else goes of Tsushima um I mean you know where to find us all all weekend we'll be on you know nice. discord Twitter um we'll yeah. also be be seeing you on Monday because some it summer is the end of the daily gaming news week we have done it another week down another week down thank you so much for joining us for this week we look forward to seeing you 1 to 2 p.m every weekday um next week as well if you missed any part of this stream the vods on twitch right after it'll also be uploaded to youtube and if you're watching on youtube make sure to join us live in the stream to join in that chat and just to say thank you to everyone watching that's been commenting or hanging out and, and throwing in the donations and the subs and all that stuff. Just thank you so much for being a part of the DGN family. We can't do this without you. We love to hear your feedback. We love for you being a part of this. And, and as we continue to drive that gaming industry news and the overall health of the gaming industry, as Kaiza and I are both passionate about this industry, I just want to say on behalf of DGN, I am Marone. I am Kaisa. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye, Bye, everybody.